Hi, my name is Bala Ambadi. I'm an ophthalmologist at the University of Utah, and today I'd like to spend a few minutes with you discussing endophthalmitis, or infection inside the eye, after cataract surgery. The main risk factors for endophthalmitis are elderly age, more than 80, immunocompromise, such as HIV or other immune deficiency dis disorders, severe blepharitis, or poor lid hygiene, if there's a lot of matter and crud on the eyelashes and eyelid margins. If there's a poor construction of the wound, if the wound at the end of cataract surgery is leaky or doesn't seal well, that's a huge risk factor for infection inside the eye. And then very importantly, if there's any intraoperative complications such as posterior capsule tear or vitreous loss. This is what endophthalmitis can look like. You, as you can see on the left picture, there's a hypopion at the bottom of the anterior chamber, as well as fibrin within the anterior chamber, resulting in an irregular pupil due to synechia formation. There's also loss of the red reflex, indicating vitreous opacification. B-scan ultrasound can show these vitreous opacifications and fluid collections or abscess formation within the eye. And if you don't have a good view of the back of the eye, a B-scan is mandatory to look for endophthalmitis in any patient who you suspect of it. The signs and symptoms that lead you to suspect endophthalmitis are pain that is unresolved with topical anesthetic, or redness of the eye, especially around the limbus, which is called ciliary flush. If there's in severe injection or ciliary flush, that's not resolved with dilating drops. That can also be a clue that there's endophthalmitis. Of course, decreased vision, loss of the red reflex, and everything I showed you on those slides before, fibrin formation in the anterior chamber, hypopion, vitreous opacities, all of those can point you towards a diagnosis of endophthalmitis. The main causes of postoperative endophthalmitis are skin flora, such as Staph aureus or Staph epidermidis. Streptococcal infections can also occur, such as Strep pyogenes or Strep agalactii. Pneumococcus tends to occur in the context of cataract surgery in patients who have had previous glaucoma surgery, such as blebs with trabeculectomy or tube shunts. Bacillus can infect a traumatized eye and bacillus is typically in, found in endophthalmitis after some sort of penetrating trauma uh, that's not surgical. Why is endophthalmitis important? Well, you can lose vision permanently or you can lose your eye. This is a very serious, devastating complication of cataract surgery. It's very feared by cataract surgeons and patients, and so it should be made clear to the patient that any time you do surgery, there is a risk for infection that you could even lose your eye with. It's a very low risk, but it's not zero. Even if you save the eye, there can be complications inside the eye, such as scar tissue formation on the retina or other intraocular structures, retinal detachment, or long-term glaucoma. How can we prevent and reduce the risk of endophthalmitis after cataract surgery or other intraocular surgeries? First, treat the patient's eyelids and skin. If they don't have good hygiene, talk with them about what you want them to do to optimize their eyelids and facial hygiene before surgery. And phrase it in a context of not accusing the patient. Don't say your face is dirty. Tell them to reduce the risk for infection after surgery. You want them to do X, Y, and Z. And so that will go into the conversation of blepharitis management, facial hygiene, and so on. Make sure they have an access to clean water in this discussion. Then, during surgery, of course, avoid hitting the posterior capsule, avoid losing vitreous. But if you do have those complications, if you do encounter vitreous, make sure you have a clean vitrectomy so that you don't leave vitreous adherent to the wound. Adherent vitreous strands can cause CME, but they can also be a wick for bacteria to get into the posterior segment of the eye. 
About two years ago, I switched to using intracameral antibiotics on all of my cataract surgery, and this has been very helpful. I use intracameral moxifloxacin on every single phacoemulsification procedure that I perform. Alternatives to moxifloxacin include intracameral cefuroxime and intracameral vancomycin. The reason I prefer moxifloxacin more than the others, even though it's a bit more expensive, is that at least in the United States context, there is no cefuroxime formulation available. And even if you do compounded cefuroxime, there's a risk of TAS, or toxic anterior segment syndrome. In Europe, and perhaps in the countries that you're in, there might be an intracameral cefuroxime formulation called APROCAM, but I believe that is very expensive. The reason I don't use vancomycin is that there is a rare but devastating risk of something called hemorrhagic occlusive retinal vasculitis. HORV, H-O-R-V, and anytime you have the word retina with occlusion or vasculitis, that's a bad thing, right? We don't want to go there. As cataract surgeons, we want a normal retina that's not bothered. Moxifloxacin, which we get straight from the Vigamox bottle, and you can divide it into probably 15 injections from a 3cc bottle of Vigamox, is a little bit more expensive, but doesn't have any of those other potential side effects or complications. For patients who have surgical complications where there's vitreous loss, in addition to doing intracameral antibiotics, I will give them oral moxifloxacin, 400 milligrams a day for one week, maybe 10 days, as well as considering doing subconjunctival antibiotics, including vancomycin and ceftazidime, into the subconjunctival space, not into the eye. If a patient gets endophthalmitis after surgery, this is something you have to jump on. If you have a cataract post-op who's calling you at 2 in the morning with severe pain, don't wait till the following morning. Go in and see that patient at 2 in the morning because every hour that the patient is not treated, you can lose retinal cells. If the patient's vision is hand motion or better, usually intravitreal antibiotics are sufficient. Again, vancomycin or ceftazidine. If the patient's vision is light perception or worse, then they need a vitrectomy. That person doing the vitrectomy should be a retina surgeon, somebody who's skilled at doing a pars plana vitrectomy and taking care of the retina. Together with the vitrectomy, doing intravitreal antibiotics is a good idea. Postoperatively, I would give oral moxifloxacin for probably two weeks. Make sure whether you do the intravitreal injection or vitrectomy surgery that you get a vitreous culture. You want to send that to the lab for microbiologic evaluation because you might have a fungal infection, you might have a rare bacterial infection. In either of those situations, you might need different drugs than what I've just discussed with you. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Bala Ambadi, and it's been my privilege to share some time with you discussing endophthalmitis. Thank you.